This is Tom Paul and the Glacier Brothers. Hello, Keith. Excited about having you guys out here tonight. This is Tom Paul, this is Chuck, and that's Jim. Can I reach Jim? Sure, I can, without falling off my stool. Excited about having you guys out here tonight, but there's a really special reason, as Hank mentioned earlier when he was talking, you guys have been Hank Snow fans for a lot of long time, and obviously he's a fan of, of you guys, right? Well, I think we were fans of his first, of course. <laughs> yeah, I remember, uh, now I read in the paper today that Hank is going to do Brand on My Heart tonight. Mm -hmm. And down in KRLD in Dallas, there was a, a personality on the radio. His name was Pappy Hal Horton. Mm -hmm. And Pappy Hal had the original Hillbilly Hit Parade. Now, that's what he called it. And that was in the middle 40s, and, and in Hank's case, when Brand on My Heart came on in 1948. But I remember hearing that record when it came on uh, the KRLD mm -hmm. previews. He had previews kind of like this. Mm -hmm. And he did the uh, brand on my heart. And I was just really excited about the voice and the sound of the record. Because I'd grown accustomed to Jimmy Rogers and, and Eddie Arnold and mm -hmm. Jimmy Davis and Gene Autry and Red Foley, not really even thinking about there might be another exciting voice come along. And then one day there it was. And that record stayed number one on that hit parade for a, a number of weeks. And then right following that came I'm moving on, and I guess everybody knows that whole history. The rest, they say, is history. <laughs> is history. Chuck, do you have a, a favorite Hank Snow story? Well, we did a lot of recording with Hank Snow. Hank used to have us over to his house, and we'd rehearse with him, and did a lot of his records. And one night he played us this song that somebody had sent him from Australia, wanted to know what we thought about it and whether we should record it or not. Well, a few weeks later, he called us and had us down to the session. It was, I've been everywhere. And we did this, the record with him. And it was, you know, fascinating how he knows a good song when he hears one. Yeah. Did you even attempt to do the names of the cities? Or? No, we. we <laughs> I think there's a little course. I never hear him do it anymore. <laughs> I don't know if he can remember all those cities oh, anymore. Well, he would rattle oh, them so quick. Yeah. Jim, what about you? Well, we were all Hank Snow fans as we were growing up. Not only the three of us, but the three older siblings in the family. When my brother John, who was next older than Tom Paul, was serving with the armed forces in Korea, Hank Snow did a tour of the military installations in Korea. And when he performed, my brother John was there, and he announced from the stage that any of the soldiers who would give Hank the name and address of their mother, he would send them a personal letter. And we didn't know that he had done that, but suddenly one day in the mail came this letter from Hank Snow addressed to our parents saying that he had uh, performed in, in Korea and met Brother John. It was a wonderful thing. I've never Imagine. forgotten how much that meant to my parents and to all of us. Now, Hank, uh, I think, was like Ernest Tubb in that he felt a real obligation and, uh, and duty to those servicemen uh, serving overseas. I know Ernest came back and, uh, of course, he'd, everywhere he went, somebody would give him a slip of paper and say, hey, call my mom and dad and tell them okay. He came back and sat down and called every one of those people. Where he, I don't know tell how much he spent in long distance phone calls, but that's the kind of obligation that that's uh, Hank very special to and have Ernest Tubb both, uh, and of course you were touched personally by that. Yeah. Well, tell me about the Glazer Brothers. Uh, of course, Tom Paul and, and Jim, you've struck out on your own solo careers. Chuck, you're very successful in the recording business. Uh, you were part of the first platinum album to come out of Nashville, The Outlaws. That's right, that's right. Didn't uh, think I knew that. <laughs> I, I Put another log on fire. <laughs> Maybe the... the <laughs> Maybe the CDs will sell another million and I'll get another royalty That'd check. be nice, yeah. And Jim, of course, you've had a very successful career with songs like You Got Me Running and, and uh, uh, When You're Not a Lady. Right. I recorded for an independent label. Mm -hmm. We were the last independent label that had a number one record in the country yeah. music field. No Chuck, you've been record. producing and doing all sorts of things in the recordings. Right. Uh, who, who all do you produce now? Well, right now I'm not uh, working with anybody in particular. I'm doing some stuff with the Kingston Trio again, Bob Shane right? and the group, and uh, that's kind of the, the current... Uh, project we haven't got in the studio yet but we're working on it so mm -hmm. that's the, the new project that i'm working on how long were you guys a part of the opera yeah uh, when we broke up the first time and uh i uh, the first time i sang on the grand Ole Opry was in 1957 so hank is really only eight years ahead of me mm -hmm. of course he came in a little stronger <laughs> I, I was just uh, marty robbins started a record company and to record the glazer brothers and uh i came down about three months before chuck and jim did and toured with him, and I did the opera and Ernest Tubbs record shop. Then in 1958, we started when we were regulars on the opera, and we did commercials and vocal backing when the Jordanaires were in the studio. Mm -hmm. And we did that for 
15 years, I guess. You guys are dressed a little bit differently than you used to back then. <laughs> you used to have the cowboy suits. And I always thought the Glacier Brothers were probably one of the sharpest looking groups in the Opry. But you look well, sharp. I, appreciate that. I don't mean to say that. Don't mean to imply that at all. Tom Paul, Chuck, Jim, all good to have you all here. We're looking forward to hearing you on stage. I understand you're going to do a medley of some of your biggest hits. Well, this used to be a good song, a little medley on the Opry that went over well, so we're going to try it again. Right. Looking forward to it. And good to, to see you, Keith. Good to see you. Stay tuned for Mel Tillis right here on our backstage show right after this word from our good sponsors. <laughs> 